May 8th, 2018, full county board meeting. The clerk will call the roll, please. Alt. Here. Anderson. Present. Barons. Here. Bills. Present. Bowman. Here. Kokenauer. Here. Crow. Present. Curtis. Yes. Hasbargan. Johnson. Yes. Crumweedy. Lemie. Lamy. McGinnis. Present. McTaggart. Offal. Here. Pursley. Present. Raymond. <clears throat> sure. Here. Sticknot. Present. Whitlow. Here. 16 present, 4 absent. Okay, Mrs. Awful. Mr. Chairman and members, we have uh, Pastor Ron Bovenschneider from the Catholic Church to lead us in prayer Dear Father in Heaven, we are privileged to be called to duty in the county or with jobs that we have, maybe reporters and any other job as ministers. You have led us into these places and we need your wisdom. Your wisdom every day, every hour, to make proper decisions. We've been put into res responsible positions to be able to, you know, help people in this county, Lord. To provide all the services necessary to keep people safe, to provide other services. And we give you thanks for that privilege. So we come before you this morning and just praise your name and ask for your mercy and help in Jesus name. Amen. This morning we're pleased to have with us the fourth grade class along with their teacher Jody Munsterman from Crescent City. They're going to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. If you'd come forward please. Okay, everybody has a copy of the agenda in front of them. Is there a motion to approve the agenda? Mrs. Waffle, is there a second? Mr. Barron, so are there any questions or comments about the agenda? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, same sign. That motion passes. Everybody has been sent a copy of the minutes. From the April 10th, 2018 session, is there a motion to approve those minutes? Mr. Whitlow, is there a second? Mr. Sticknoff, are there any questions or comments about those minutes? <coughs> Seeing none, every, everybody in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, same sign. Payroll. Mr. Crumweedy makes the motion. Is there a second? Mr. Curtis, are there any questions or comments on the payroll? Seeing none, the clerk will call the roll, please. Anderson. Yes. Barons. Yes. Bills. Yes. Bowman. Yes. Kokenauer. Yes. Crow. Yes. Curtis. Yes. Johnson. Yes. Crumweedy. Yes. McGinnis. Yes. Mc He's not here. But, uh, awful. Yes. Pursley, yes. sure. Yes. Sticknot. Yes. Whitlow. Yes. Alt. Yes. 
16 to 0. That motion passes 16 to 0. Public comments. Seeing none, we'll move on to chairman comments. If I can get my stuff together here. Back in the first days of February, we received a letter from the Illinois Counties Association announcing funds that have been, av been made available to all counties throughout Illinois to benefit 501c3 charitable organizations. A sum of $800 was set aside for Iroquois County with the recipient to be selected by the county board chairman. Today I take great pleasure in presenting a check for $400 each to the Ark of Iroquois County here in Wasika and to Abra in Sheldon. Both organizations provide much needed support to people with developmental disabilities. These are people who through no fault of their own will never be able to lead a normal life. Because of the efforts by the dedicated staff at both organizations, there is much that can and has been done to provide the developmentally disabled with the care they need and to help them lead their lives to the fullest extent possible. Both organizations receive part of their financial revenue from the tax levy and these funds are distributed by the 377 board. It should be noted that the tax levy distribution comes nowhere near meeting their financial needs. Both organizations rely heavily on donations and so with the best wishes of Iroquois County, we give you these checks. Next, I have a letter to read to the board. It says, Dear Board Members, we the residents of Iroquois County commend the Iroquois County Board for adopting a resolution opposing gun control for the state of Illinois. It is comforting to know that our Second Amendment rights are being protected and Iroquois County can be a sanctuary for legal gun owners. It is hoped that other Illinois counties will follow your lead in opposing gun control legislation. It's signed by Ted Horner. I'm not sure I can read all the other names that are on here. Michael Dixon, Judy Griffith. Um, there's quite a list of names here. If anybody wants to see the other names, why well, you're welcome to look at this. The last thing that I have this morning, several of us here today have served in the United States Armed Forces. There is no doubt a great debt is owed to those who have served in our military, especially those who made the ultimate sacrifice. For approximately 13 years, senior military veterans from all parts of our country have been flown to our nation's capital for special ceremonies, recognizing their service and sacrifice to our country. This activity is called the Honor Flight. It's the final tour of duty with honor and remembrance. <clears throat> Today we recognize one of our own county board members who has been selected for this honor. Tomorrow, Ernie Curtis will be aboard the honor flight to Washington, D.C. from Midway Airport in Chicago. Congratulations, Ernie. Yeah. Enjoy your day and cherish the memories. Thank you. Outside organization reports.
Congratulations, Ernie. Make a good show for Iroquois County while you're out there. Uh, a few new faces in the in the room. I'm Ken Berigree. I'm the executive director for the Iroquois Economic <coughs> Development Association. We are not a county committee or, or uh, group, but we are supported financially and hopefully with confidence from with from the county board and uh, communities councils and lots of private businesses uh, a couple of things I was gonna I may have to read a little bit here because they get a little wordy but uh, one thing I wanted to talk about today was <clears throat> something that's called an opportunity zone uh, there's a new program that may give us a huge boost we'll see but uh, it's an it's goes towards the investment of private capital in w within a county I wrote a letter to uh, Governor Rauner, Tom Bennett uh, submitted it to him for us, <clears throat> asking that certain areas of Iroquois County be declared opportunity zones. Uh, my, my letter asked the governor, there were five areas that were determined, and my governor asked that all five of those qualifying areas be designated and included in the program. Actually the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act of <clears throat> 2017 established this new uh, economic development program <clears throat> they're called opportunity zones and they're de designed excuse me they're designed to encourage longer term uh, private investments in low income communities the program provides tax incentives for reinvesting capital gains into these opportunity funds and it has the potential to put a lot of private capital to work in distressed areas and hopefully serve as a catalyst for for some economic development uh, as I said there are five qualifying tracks within the county uh, <clears throat> if you look at the map that covers them you can almost draw a line straight north and south through through the county through Watsika most of the area east of that is in those zones there is another s s uh, strip that stretches Gilman to Watsika the closer you get to 57 it seems like the less uh, qualified the areas were but it's a good chunk of, of the county that, that qualifies <clears throat> the qualifications were that the poverty rate would be at least 20 percent of the population or where the median family income does not exceed 80 percent of the statewide median family income <clears throat> this uh, opportunity opportunity zone program it's designed to reward the like I said the capital uh, gains and the capital investments into these low uh, low income communities um, all of the underlying incentives relate uh, purely to capital gains they're all they're all tied to uh, the longevity of the investor the longer they leave their money in there the <clears throat> the more they will be able to take or get back from it uh, there's there's three main ones I could mention there's a temporary deferral of uh, income taxes on <clears throat> excuse me on any capital uh, gain that's reinvested into an opportunity fund and that defer of deferral of taxes can be as long as until December 31st of 2026 so <clears throat> it's a pretty good invest to keep your money in your pocket a little bit longer there's also a stepped up basis on these uh, if the funds are held for five years you're allowed to add 10 percent to the basis which in other words your cost what, what you sell it for minus your cost is your capital gain you get to increase that cost by 10 percent so uh, a chunk of money you don't have to pay taxes on if you hold it for seven years there's another five percent that gets added on there <clears throat> higher base less gain less taxes uh, there's also a permanent exclusion if uh, of, of taxes on any capital gains that are earned from the opportunity funds that doesn't apply to the original capital gain that you put in there but if the, the gain that you put in there makes a gain and you leave it in the program for 10 years or more you don't have to pay any taxes on that gain so it could be an incentive hopefully uh, get some of the rich guys to help us out I guess uh, it, it could be a nice incentive to to go to the table with when we're talking to, to different people uh, <clears throat> it takes me back to another much older program that I think everybody's probably heard of but that's the uh, 
enterprise zones. Many number of years ago, they uh, started this program. Uh, it's an area that <clears throat> is de uh, determined to, again, be in need of uh, a shot in the arm and the uh, EZs, as they're called. They're, uh, how could I, I guess, in, in an area where the policies encourage economic growth and development, these zones are, are implemented where, where that's needed. Uh, <clears throat> the state, the, the county as a, uh, the county board as a group would have to <clears throat> approve this kind of thing, and the state then would, would approve that request, so it would take some, you know, a little time, little meetings, a little uh, rules. But the state offers some incentive, incentives to uh, any area that, that does that. For example, they would give, the state gives an exemption on the retailer's occupation tax on building materials. Encourage some people to build some things, come to come to the county and build some businesses, hopefully. They, they give out an investment tax credit of a half a percent on qualified property. Uh, they expand state, state sales tax exemptions on the person, purchase of personal property that is con used or consumed in manufacturing. Uh, they have an ex exemption on the state utility tax for electricity and natural gas. And they have an exemption on the Illinois Commerce Commission's administrative uh, charge in telecommunications excise taxes. So the state thinks it's good enough that they've put together some some uh, premiums. The county could, could add things or not add things, but it is an, just one more thing, <clears throat> one more box we can check off when we say, here's what we can offer to you. I first mentioned these uh, enterprise zones a number of years ago, not long after I started doing this job. And the, after I made a little presentation, some of you were here and you probably remember it, uh, the then county board chairman, Ron Schrader, asked the then county clerk, Mark Henricks, if he had an opinion on the EZs, and Mark said they were TIF districts on steroids. <laughs> well, the operator op opportunity never gained much traction right after that, but from the lessons that we've learned in the last eight or ten years, uh, I wonder if maybe it didn't time to inject some steroids into our development plans. Um, and especially with the new statewide interest in the opportunity zones, it might be a good time to try to, to uh, tack on an enterprise zone a as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh, I'm sure you know by now, you've, if you've listened to the radio or you've read the paper or you're on Facebook, that uh, Nichols Paint and Fab located here in, in Watsika, they'll be featured on an upcoming TV series called Wrenched. Uh, Justin Nichols and his crew will be featured each week for six hour long episodes. Uh, first episode will be at 9 p.m. on May 15th. It's on the Velocity Channel, Mediacom, if you're here in Wasika, it does have the Velocity Channel. Uh, growing up, I was a good friend of, of uh, J Justin's dad, Steve. Had some fun together, got in trouble together, you know how it goes. But uh, Steve, so I, I've known Justin for a long time, and Steve had some pretty interesting talents too. Uh, those guys up at uh, Nichols Paint and Faber, they, they do some amazing things, they really will. Uh, there will be a premiere watching night at the uh, Watsika Theater starting at 7 p.m. on the 15th. Admissions free, there will be some cars on, on display outside I believe, and the show will be premiered on the big screen, so that could be kind of fun. Uh, you're probably also aware that the city of Watsika is in the process of applying for flood mitigation grant to the Illinois Department of Natural Resources. That money, if they receive it, can only be used to tear down severely damaged homes, not to raise them, not to move them. The program is entirely voluntary, so many of the homes that probably should be eliminated may not meet that fate, but everyone that does will be some progress. There's some confidence that somewhere between one and five million dollars will be made available for that project. Uh, probably closer to one than five because the IDNR only has 12 million for the whole state. <clears throat> but no matter what the amount is, it, it'll be a big help moving in, in the right direction. Uh, it does create a 
Another little problem, I guess, additional problem that we'll probably have to address. Uh, there may be a slight boom in home sales for, for a little bit. We, we will get rid of some of the problems that happen when it's flooding. But some, uh, some of the folks who agree to, to accept the money, it's voluntary, so if they agree to accept the money, their house will get t torn down. They've got to go someplace else. Um, some of them may not most likely receive enough money to uh, buy a more expensive house on the dry side of town. So housing accommodations will need to be uh, considered for those people or they may simply just pack up and leave uh, as we saw heavily after the 08 flood. That would mean a continuing drop in the population of Watsika and possibly the county and we can't afford that. The county's population dropped below that magic 30,000 number after the 08 flood and we've been focused on trying to reverse that trend every day since. Uh, as I said, we can't afford to, to have that happen again. We can't afford to have more residents leave the county and we, uh, we need to address that. Even though we're moving in the right direction on the floods, we need to address the other sides of it too. Uh, just a few miscellaneous things here. The Watsika area Chamber of Commerce had a great annual meeting down at the uh, town and country in Milford. Colleen does a great job down there. Uh, there's still multiple partners interested in the Bosch building. Nobody's really put a pen to the paper yet, but there's still some, some strong interest. The Pizza Hut building in Watsika did sell, and there sh should soon be a familiar face occupying that location. Uh, the Gilman Auto Sales did a great job remodeling over there, and uh, they had a nice grand reopening. Uh, I got a special one here. The Ileana Lock Service has just pushed, purchased the building just across the tracks in, in Watsika, right across from where the elevator used to be. Uh, he's moving his business down there, and I mention it because it's interesting. That building has set empty since ever since Nichols Paint and Fab moved out of it to the building that they're in now. So. <clears throat> anyway, another building filled up. There are a couple of prospects that have been sniffing around some of the vacant property east of Watsika. And actually, despite the way the appearances, you drive through town and you think you, you see a lot of empty buildings, there seems to have developed kind of a shortage of buildings available in Watsika. So I guess my takeaway is that maybe we are working our way out of the, the great flood. Anybody have questions about anything I was commenting on? Hi. Um, I noticed there in Gilman where roosters used to be, they're doing some work on the outside and that building was sold, so I was wondering if you heard anything about no, that. No, I hadn't, no. Yeah. So they're working on the outside of it and just kind of wondering. Must be a reason, I hope. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thanks. Good. Dan? They haven't. Uh, I think they're closer. I think they're staying. I'm not. I, I think I commented. Maybe I didn't comment here, but I think I commented once more that I thought it probably would end up being torn down. I'm not certain of that now, but uh, there's a lot of hoops I think they have to jump through to meet Nationals uh, requirements. But uh, I think he's closer. I think we're still going to see a McDonald's and, and probably not too distant future. We'll find out where. Okay, thanks. Any other outside organization reports this morning? Seeing none, we'll move on to the committee reports. Members of the County Board, your committee to whom was referred policy and procedure would beg leave to submit the following report on the matters before them. Your committee met at the Administrative Center on April 26, 2018 at 9 a.m. Members present were John Schur, Charlie Alt, Russell Bills, and Marvin Sticknoth. Dan Raymond, Kyle Anderson, Lyle Bairns, and Troy Crumweedy were absent. Also present, County Clerk Lisa Fancher, Treasurer Mindy Kuntz-Hagen, Circuit Clerk Lisa Hines, Supervisor of Assessments Bob Yergler, Sheriff Derek Hagen, County Engineer Joel Moore, 
911 Director Eric Raymond and Wendy Davis with the Times Republic. The meeting was called to order. It was moved by Russell Bills and seconded by Marvin Sticknot to approve the agenda. The motion carried by a voice vote. There were no public comments. The committee chairs gave their monthly reports. Highway Chairman Russell Bills reported the Highway Department will be taking bids for equipment and will receive their monthly reports. Management Vice Chairman Charlie Alt. The Management Committee will discuss the county farm, opportunities with solar farms, and lighting efficiencies in the county buildings. Tax Chairman Marvin Sticknath reported the committee will receive monthly department head reports. County Board Chairman John Schur took a moment to speak about Finance Director Anita Speckman's resignation. Schur noted over the past six years, the county's financial position and records have vastly improved thanks to Speckman, and she will be greatly missed. Schur read EMA Director Eric Sacy's report to the committee due to Sacy attending an IESMA training summit. Sacy's report read as follows. Overhaul of the Hazardous Materials Response Plan, purchasing for the EOC Technology Grant. The grant is 100% reimbursable. Attending a crisis planning meeting for Crescent City Grade School on April 23rd. Hosted a flood review meeting on April 25, continuing work with a long-term recovery committee. Sacy's report also noted the disaster declaration for Iroquois County can be terminated at this time. Lastly, Governor Rauner has requested President Trump for individual assistance, but there is no timeline on when the federal government will answer the request. The job description for 911 Director Eric Raymond was reviewed. Sure made adjustments to the job description such as changing the title of ETSB Director to ETS Director, and including wording that states the director must be qualified to work on the radio. Sure stated the recommendations from policy and procedure will be sent to the 911 board for their approval. It was moved by Alt and seconded by Bills to approve policy and procedures recommendations to the 911 Director's job description that motion carried by a voice vote. The committee discussed setting salaries for the county clerk, treasurer, circuit clerk, and sheriff. Sure provided possible salaries for the committee to review and approve as follows. They're listed there in front of you. It was moved by bills and seconded by Sticknath to set the treasurer's salary at 58000 for fiscal year 19, 59250 for fiscal year 20, Twenty seven sixty thousand seven fifty for fiscal year twenty one and sixty two thousand five hundred for fiscal year twenty two. The county clerk and circuit clerk salary at fifty eight thousand seven fifty for fiscal year nineteen, sixty thousand five hundred for fiscal year twenty, sixty two thousand two fifty for fiscal year twenty one, and sixty four thousand for fiscal year 22, that's not in there. The sheriff's salary would be at 73,000 for fiscal year 19, 74, 460 for fiscal year 20, 75, 949 for fiscal year 21, and 77,468 for fiscal year 22. A roll call vote was taken and that motion carried. Based upon Sacy's recommendation during his report, it was moved by Bills and seconded by all to terminate the disaster declaration for Iroquois County. That motion carried by a voice vote. Correspondence was distributed to the committee. The committee reviewed the claims. It was moved by Sticknath and seconded by Bills to pay the claims subject to county board approval. A roll call vote was taken and that motion carried. During new business, Sure referred to House Bill 4581 that was emailed to all board members. The bill intends to increase the age of the delinquent minor from 18 years to 21 years, and UCCI strongly opposes this bill. Sure said the resolution opposing the bill will be discussed at the Judicial Committee meeting. As there was no further business to come before the committee, it was moved by bills and seconded by Sticknot to adjourn at 9.43 a.m. 
That motion carried by a voice vote. All this is respectfully submitted, signed by all members present, and I move for its adoption. Is there a second? This is awful. Are there any questions or comments about the report? I have one question, I guess, on this other piece of paper we got here. Yes, sir. Budgets. Yes, sir. What's uh, on the P and P here on the bottom? Is that just something different, or what happened? What happened there was that following the finance committee, the sheriff. Mr. Anderson and I had a brief discussion in which the sheriff he expanded on his views regarding the, the sheriff's salary. And I think you've received uh, some paperwork on that bef uh, before from him where uh, what we tried to do was, was to rearrange that. And uh, so that's, that's something that we can consider this morning. In order to do so, we would need a motion. We need a motion. That, yes, sir. You're seconding me. Okay. Okay. We're going to separate out the, the part on the uh, on the salaries. Is there any questions or comments about that? Do you want to include in your motion to adopt the, what's on that piece yes. of paper? I, I will include in my motion to adopt the uh, second line there, where it goes, uh, looks like the sheriff is going to end up in 2022 20, at 79, the circuit clerk would be at 64, the county clerk would be at 64, and the treasurer would be at 62, 500. All right. Everything stays the same for the treasurer to, and the two <coughs> clerks. It's just the sheriffs that's, that's changed. And the numbers come out pretty close to the other. So, <clears throat> Is there any other questions or comments on this? Does, does the 79 for FY22, does that address the disparity between the sheriff being <coughs> lower than his deputies or the sergeants and lieutenants or does it put him above them well it's difficult to say because their that contract will be up for renegotiation and we don't know what what the result of that will be we can project a little bit but it'll be is, is that the it'll be better than it is now so it'd where be, does he it'll be moving in the right direction about the you know and i think it's felt by that at this point in time it's probably the best that the county is able to do so what's the disparity right now? How much? You you have some paperwork on yeah. that. Everybody should have a copy of that. I've got it somewhere here in my in my in my notes. And how do the other um, the treasurer, the circuit clerk, and county clerk line up with their employees? Are they below or above? You were given a copy today of uh, of uh, other counties, and you can see. No, on I'm there. saying of our within us, our employees. Are they above? They're all the others are above. Yeah. So the sheriff is the only one that's below, still. Well, um, yes I just and, think the sheriff. I mean. Y it, yes it, and no. That's a situation that can change from time to time. The others are are all above. The only other one that might be close would be in the nine one one department. Because of that new wage scale, the yeah. and the seniority involved, that that gap isn't going to be that great. And again. That contract will be up for renewal next year, and we don't know where that will go at this point. Okay. So. I'm, just, I'm just concerned about the sheriff being underpaid as far as when you compare to the people he, he supervises um, and to attract future you know, sheriffs either from within the department, some of our good deputies, that might want to run it when he retires, but it would be a pay cut. Um, so well, I'd again, like to see it set. I, I understand at your 80, point. Thousand to yeah. be above the lieutenants and. I understand your point. It's a difficult situation because if you look at the paperwork that Anita prepared before she mm -hmm. left, 
in, com in the comparisons with other counties, mm -hmm. the sheriff's salary right now is, is pretty much on a, on a par on an average with other comparable counties. The problem is that our lieutenants and sergeants pay is out of whack with what it is in other counties. There are two other counties, I believe it's Lee County and LaSalle County right mm -hmm. now, where the lieutenants are paid more than the sheriff. I agree, it's probably not a desirable situation. In the private sector, it's something that occurs frequently. Uh, there are reasons for it, but nevertheless, it isn't, it isn't unprecedented. But in this case, it's probably something that we need to look at very carefully. Are we going to go by the by making sure or the, the tenant or promise premise that the sheriff's salary has to be higher than the lieutenants and the sergeants, no matter where those two salaries go? The way the way the union negotiations go in in the entire state of Illinois, we don't have a lot of control over that. That is correct. And so, consequently, you can ask the question: When is it all going to end? Where is it going to end? And wh how are we going to handle the taxpayers' money mm -hmm. in that respect. I think that's a big responsibility that this board has. This is taxpayers' money that we're that talking about correct. using. So these are all things that we've tried to take into account. Uh, Mr. Anderson can tell you that he and I spent a fair amount of time with the sheriff and we talked about all these aspects. It's, there's no clear resolution to them. Uh, but this is, what, this is what I've come up with. Mr. Mr. Mc um, are the sergeant? Thank you. Are the sergeants and the lieutenants are they still union? Yes, they are. They are union. Yes, sir. So that the, the the union dictates that. Yes, sir. So that's what you have to put up with, I guess. Well, it's it's as I said, the pay that the sergeants and lieutenants get in this county is not in line with comparable counties in other areas. It's much higher, and that's really what's brought this around. So it's not a it's not a good situation. Uh, this is where we're at. If somebody has any suggestions or wanting to do this differently, why um, you know we're open to hearing it. But Mrs. Crow. Unfortunately, I don't have a suggestion, but historically, this was a problem going back to when Eldon Sproul was sheriff, and uh, we had some lieutenants and sergeants who had a great deal of seniority, and there was a great disparity, and it wasn't addressed at that time. And then, of course, we froze the wages of the elected officials, and so the gap has, has really kind of widened. And so I think it's appropriate that we do address it as best we can at this time because the <coughs> things that have been stated, you know, about it being a continuing upward scale due to the fact that we have the, the unions uh, is um, going to be something that we're going to have to continue to monitor for a long time. But, well, for forever, probably. <laughs> forever. Um, I would note, on this sheet that we have where it makes comparisons to other counties, many of them similar in size to us um, that I'm familiar with. Um, there's only one, two, three, four that are below us in percentage to our, it's in the last right-hand col column. So, um, I know that we're spending taxpayer dollars, and that's difficult. But as Chad said, we need to think about the future as well. And that's the reason why why the yeah, sheriff's right. part was was revised, and that's what we're looking at today. It doesn't probably accomplish the thing entirely, but it's starting to move in the right direction. So. Um, sheriff. Do you have anything to add for the record or since we're talking about it and for everyone else? Well, I think some of you have been in finance or judicial and heard my take on it. 
It occurred because of the salary freeze for the elected officials from 2010 to 2014. Had the traditional raise occurred over those four years, um, had the traditional raise occurred, the sheriff's salary right now would be a few hundred dollars on top above what a lieutenant's base salary is. I understand with overtime and that that there may be employees that make more than an elected official or department head. I get that. But starting off where the department head or elected official is behind the employees from a base salary standpoint, uh, to me, is a problem. Um, there were two counties in that uh, list that Anita had handed out. Uh, I talked with the sheriff from LaSalle County. His, uh, for his next four years, his county board is addressing that. Uh, the raises that he's going to get over the next four years uh, is going to have him uh, no longer behind the lieutenant. Um, something else that I think you have to look at is this. Number one, you're, you're setting not to speak legally here, but you're setting a precedent in that if incoming elected officials are going to get less of a raise their first term, uh, primarily for the sheriff's squad, uh, a new sheriff coming in not only is going to be behind what a lieutenant makes, but then could possibly be a lot more behind after that first term if you're going to scale back the raises to the incoming uh, newly elected department head gets, uh, official gets. Um, that's one aspect. Uh, the other aspect is um, it's okay to look at numbers and population, which a lot of that is done by, but sometimes you need to break it down and look into the responsibilities as well of each of those sheriff's offices. Some of those sheriff's offices in those counties that you're comparing to have multiple agencies that are full-time police departments. Uh, which means the sheriff is not the primary uh, responder for those areas. Just like in Iroquois County, Watsika is the only 24-hour police department besides the sheriff's office. So uh, do we assist Watsika? Yes. Do they help us at times? Yes. But Watsika is not our primary responsibility when 911 gets called because they have a full-time police department. All those other villages that either don't have a police officer are the sheriff's responsibility. And those that do have a police officer that works 40 hours a week, the, uh, you know, eight hours a day, five days a week, their days off, the sheriff is covering for them. And uh, their time off, 16 hours out of the day, the sheriff is also covering for them. So I think just to base something based on population, and it, it appears that salaries are in the normal range, uh, sometimes you got to dig a little deeper and see what responsibilities each one of those uh, sheriff's offices have within that county. Um, you know, the sheriff's office took a big hit back in 2010. All the offices did. The, there's not a county in Illinois that the sheriff's office is not the biggest part of the budget. I get that. We run the jail over 24 hours a day, 365 days. A day. So whether it's Cook County or Iroquois County, the sheriff's office takes up the biggest part of the general fund budget. Um, but the staffing levels that were lost at the sheriff's office you know, one, you want to talk about sergeant and lieutenants right now. At one point, there were three lieutenants and three sergeants at the sheriff's office. Right now, we have one lieutenant and two sergeants. You know, we're a paramilitary organization. We need a chain of command. Um, there's no chief deputy there because of the salary issues. So, uh, you know, my personal opinion on it is moving forward. At some point, this has got to be corrected. And if it's not corrected now, when is it going to be? especially if you're going to set a precedent that an incoming elected official, a newly elected official, is going to get less of a raise, uh, you know, because they're new. And that's going to widen that gap on the sheriff's side of it. <clears throat> Mrs. Alfo. I have a question. I understand everything he's saying, and uh, most of it I agree with. However, what do we do if the union continues to raise above his in the future and continues that? I mean, how do we work something like that? That's why I said there's a lot of unknowns, and I also said, where does it all end? It's a vicious cycle that we're involved in, and it's not just here. It's, it's throughout the entire state. 
Um, I, for one, have a lot of concerns about that. If you look at the wage scales that, that the deputies and the 911 telecommunicators are under, they get a 45 to 5% raise every year. That's, that's what's putting us in trouble. That's well beyond the rate of inflation, and uh, yet that's something we're burdened with because of this procedure called STEPS that we've tried to get out, and we haven't been successful. Uh, probably not going to be successful if we go on the basis of past performance. So, by the same token, we also have, as I said before, we have financial constraints here as well. Uh, we have a situation with 911 where we have a huge amount of money and back pay that's a part of this contract that we're going to talk about in a little while. Uh, we wonder where we're going to get the money for that. So I think, I think you know, all these issues play into one another. I think basically what we're doing is moving in the right direction, and we need to continue to do that. Um, obviously, four years from now, many of the people here today won't be on the board anymore, but many of you will be. It'll be up to the people that are here to continue the process. So that's that's kind of the where it's at, Mr. Anderson. Yeah, that talking about the precedent. I was gonna, that was just kind of hit on it. The board's going to look totally different in four years. The precedent could be completely different. Uh, when we first started talking about this, Mike and myself, we had the treasure because there's going to be a new treasure. We had it frozen for four years. Use it. I'll just talk louder. But they. Uh, talking with the sheriff, talking with everybody else, that probably doesn't make much sense by freezing it for four years. That, that could have been a little extreme, but uh, given the same amount, I don't, just, I don't like that idea either. I think that this part where you got it for the treasurer is fine. Our, on our first proposal, we had, the courts were a little bit higher each year. We did end at 80 on our first one with the sheriff. I know we went around, I know this is probably about as good as it's going to get to pass through this board, but my only concern is the first number is going to get a, the sheriff's office actually gets less raise. The only one he's going to get more is, is the treasurer. He's going to have 250 less than the circuit clerk and the county clerk the first year. I don't think a motion to pass this. No, that's just the only otherwise. In order, in order to backload it, that was the way it worked out. Some money balance, I got it. All right. Anybody else have any questions or comments? Mrs. Crow. This is just for, did we vote on the motion to remove this? No. no, we haven't voted on it yet. To remove to remove it. We're just having the discussion. Yeah. Part of the motion is approving it, so that's why we're having the discussion. That was my question. Mr. Whitlow. I agree that, you know, sooner or later that issue is going to have to be adjusted. You know, the idea is when, when I suppose. It's, of course, it's about finances, but in the last couple of years, there has been some high salaried employees in the sheriff's department retire than several lieutenants, and that's going to result, result in a substantial savings on that budget. Um, so it may be the time to address this, you know, and get it squared up. Okay, anybody else? Mr. McGinnis. I move to amend the starting salary or the salary effective 12 1 18 to start at 80,000, not 71 5. Hmm. What? End up at 80. End up at 80. End up at 80. I'm sorry, end up at 80. I had my numbers wrong. In which year? 2022, right? Yeah. Just to increase it because of that difference. You're just changing the last one? Yeah. You're leaving the first three the same. I forgot how you prorate that out. 
make the adjustments so that it ends at 80,000 on it's an increase of 1,000 on FY22. So whatever the that's the only adjustment you're you're asking yes, for. Yes. Yeah, to increase it slightly so that it ends up at 80,000 on FY22. It so ends up at 80 if that's if you change the one in FY22. We have to change from, FY from each 70. one of those might be 717 or whatever the number is. Uh, these these aren't working on a. Uh, yeah. These aren't working on a percentage basis. Okay. These are numbers that are that are put together on a scale to try and get up. Okay. They're helping the math. Yeah. I, I'm afraid I'm a little bit confused by your motion. Yeah. <laughs> you, I, I think what, what he wants to do on help this me with my numbers. Is 250 every year to make up the thousand to get into 80,000 instead of 70. That's what I'm trying to say. I'm sorry, I'm migraine here. I don't. I'm again. I don't see how that. If you raise it up 250 every year, then you're going to be at 79,250 the last year. Mr. Anderson, I'll try this thing again. It's 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 arbitrary numbers. They're yeah. you're setting it. Period. Or just, unless I'm wrong, sure. Jim, you're just, we're just saying 40 numbers at the end of each year. Beginning of each year, it's a dollar amount. It it's not <coughs> tied to any percentage, any. 250, 500. Right. Right. Just say his motion. What he said, the first sentence was right, 80,000. He wants that last number to say 80,000. It is what it is. You know, that's not, I don't know how to explain it properly, but it, you need to call Anita, but she's gone. So. Well, I, yeah, I want it to end at 80,000. Yeah, but you don't have to step it up each time. That's, to say if they want to step, that's fine. I just want it to end at 80,000. So right. you just want to change the 79,000 to 80,000. Yes. The other numbers you're going to leave the same. Yeah, I want to make sure it ends at 80. So that that's I just what feel we're that's, that's what number. we're trying to understand. Yeah, I'm so sorry. I make sure we all have all get have a clear picture of what we're doing. Yeah. No. Sorry, John. So in the last in the last year, he would be getting what would amount to a four thousand dollar increase. Help increase. Yeah. Help. Okay. That's fine. Increase that disparity or okay. reduce the dis. Okay. Now where are we at? We had a motion on the floor. My to apologies to the Mr. Mr. Mann, <laughs> let me get this, try and make some sense of it. 12-121. Yeah. Somebody want a second Chad's motion? Mr. Kokenauer. Now we have two motions on the floor. Let's take the second motion first so then we know what yeah, we got. Right okay. Is there any question about that? Seeing none, the clerk can call the roll, please. Wait. What's the The motion is to change the last amount in the sheriff's salary, fiscal year 2021, to, 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 for fiscal year 2022, from 79000 to 80000 To get at. That's, that's the motion. One number change. Right. One number change in. Then we're going to vote the whole. That's yeah. the only number yeah. that's being changed. If we approve that motion, then we'll vote on not approving the, the rest of what's in there. Everybody understand? Okay. Barons. Yes. Bills. Yes. Bowman. Yes. Coconauer. Crow, yes. Curtis, yes. Johnson, yes. Crumweedy, yes. McGinnis, yes. Offal, yes. Persley, yes. Shure, yes. Sticknot, yes. Whitlow, yes. Alt, no. Anderson. Yes. So it's 
15 to 1. Okay, that motion is approved 15 to 1. So now we're looking at, a, at the motion approving the, the what's on the bottom paragraph or bottom part of the page there. Um, I don't know if I need to read off all the amounts. Does every, everybody understand what the amounts are that we're talking about? Are there any other questions about this? Seeing none, you call the roll, okay. please. Bills. Yes. Bowman. Yes. Coconauer. Yes. Crow. Yes. Curtis. Yes. Johnson. Yes. Crumweedy. Yes. McGinnis. Yes. Awful. Yes. Hursley. Yes. Sure. Yes. Sticknot. Yes. Whitlow. Yes. Alt. Yes. Anderson. Yes. Barons. Yes. 16 to 0. Motion carried. Okay, now we have the rest of the report. Then motion and seconded to approve the remainder of the report. Are there any further questions? Mrs. Crow. Does Mr. Raymond have a contract? Yes, he does. And is the um, residency requirement in his contract? Yes, it is. I thought it was in there. Well, maybe I overlooked it. I remember seeing it somewhere, but maybe it's not in here right now. I don't see it looking at it real quickly. That's something we can include. When it, when it goes to the 911 board, these are what well, this is a recommendation on the part of the county board. The, the 911 board, ETS board, is the one that has the authority, or whatever, to approve that the job description. Anybody else have any questions, Mrs. Johnson? I'm a little confused. Um, in in the report, it says. Um, changing wording that states that the director must be qualified to work on the radio, but then in the job description, number 15 says act in the capacity of all roles of the telecommunicators. I believe that's intended to include that. Okay. That's, I wasn't, here it looks to me like you're omitting that, and here it looks like it's still in there. No, I, I think that's intended to include the requirement to work on the radio. Or Thank be you. able to do that. The director already has put in some time on the radio. Okay, thanks for clarifying. Okay, any other questions? Seeing none, the clerk can call the roll. Bowman. Yes. Coconauer. Yes. Crow. Curtis. Johnson. Yes. Crumweedy. Yes. McGinnis. Yes. Awful. Yes. Persley. Yes. Sure. Yes. Sticknot. Yes. Whitlow. Yes. Alt, Anderson, yes. Barons, yes. Bills. Yes. Motion carried 16 to 0. <laughs> that motion is approved 16 to 0. Finance Committee, Mr. Anderson. Mr. Chairman, members of the County Board, your committee to whom is referred finance will beg leave to submit the following report on the matters before them. Your committee met at the Administrative Center on May 3, 2018 at 9 a.m. Members present, Anderson, Alt, Bills, Curtis, Johnson. McTaggart and Raymond were absent. Also present, County Board Chairman John Schur. Sheriff Derek Hagan, Treasurer Mindy Kuntzhagen, Supervisor of Assessments Bob Yergler, Probation Director Tom Latham, County Engineer Joel Moore, EMA Director Eric Sacy, ICPHD Administrator D. Shippert, 911 Director Eric Raymond, Greg Steffen with Compass Insurance, Susie Warner with Homestar Insurance, Roger Bard, and Wendy Davis with the Times Republic. The meeting was called to order. It was moved by Russell Bills and seconded by Ernie Curtis to approve the agenda. Motion was motion carried by a voice vote. There were no public comments. Greg Steffen with Compass Insurance reported on behalf of Randy Schultz. Three vehicles were removed from the policy, which resulted in a credit and a refund will be issued. A certificate of insurance was issued on the copier system. The insurance company is continuing to work with the Sheriff's Department on loss, loss control. Susie Warner with Homestar Insurance reported no updates. Department heads gave their monthly reports. They are as follows. 911 Director Eric Raymond reported he is hiring for a telecommunicator. Treasurer Mindy Kuntzhagen reported the solid waste CD's renewal date is coming up soon. Best interest rate was offered at the current financial institution, and the CD will re be renewed there. Also, tax bills are printed and will be mailed within the next couple days. ICPHD Administrator D. Shipper reported the Board of Health met Wednesday, May 2nd. 
EMA Director Eric Sacy reported the county has been denied FEMA assistance. The governor has requested SBA assistance, which would provide low interest loans for individuals. Sacy will keep the committee up to date on the status of this. Lastly, Sacy has begun using the funds for the EOC technology grant. Probation Director Tom Latham reported contract negoti negotiations are still underway. They expired November 30th, 2017. County Engineer Joel Moore reported the Highway Department will open bids for two new tandem trucks, the annual striping contract, and the resurfacing contract. Sheriff Derek Hagan reported the three vehicles removed from the insurance policy earlier in the meeting all belong to the Sheriff's Department. They were purchased by Acme Auto Salvage. Prior to the meeting, Hagan distributed information to all board members regarding the proposed sheriff salary. Hagan said there was a discrepancy between the sergeant, lieutenant, and sheriff due to a four-year salary freeze, and based upon the salary proposal from the policy and procedure, the salary gap will widen over the next four years. The other elected officials are also receiving an increase in pay, but their increase will continue to put them ahead of those they supervise. The opposite is happening for the sheriff's position. Hagan asked the committee to review the salary structure before a decision is made. Hagan also told the committee he will be testing for deputy positions. Finance Chairman Kyle Anderson discussed the need to appoint an IMRF authorized agent for the county due to the departure of the finance director. It was moved by Charlie Alt and seconded by Ernie Curtis to appoint executive assistant Amanda Longfellow as the IMRF authorized agent. Roll call vote was taken. Motion carried. Anderson stated this appointment will, not, will, will be on an interim basis. Anderson informed the committee of the 2019 preliminary IMRF rates. They are as follows. Regular 5.11% and SLEP 10.15%. The 2018 IMRF rates were were 9.56 percent and re for the regular and 14.47 for SLEP. Anderson told the committee the joint dispatch contract was was received and a copy will be sent to them for review prior to the full board meeting on Tuesday, May 8th. It was moved by Bills and seconded by Johnson to send the joint dispatch contract to the full board as per the arbitration ruling. Roll call vote was taken. Motion carried. The review of financial policies needs to be completed by the end of the fiscal year. The committee will begin review of this policies in June. The committee review claims it was moved by Curtis and seconded by Bills to pay the claims subject to county board approval. Roll call vote was taken. Motion carried. Under new business, Anderson reported there have been a few applications for the finance director position. As there was no further business to come before the committee, it was moved by Alton, seconded by Johnson, to adjourn at 9.24 a.m. Motion carried by a voice vote. All of which is respectfully submitted. Signed by all members present. I move for its adoption. <clears throat> the motion on the floor to approve the finance committee report is there a second mr bills are there any questions or comments on the report is everybody that was last thursday i haven't talked to mike he's been busy i don't know if donna's shaking her head so we're not exactly being inundated with possibilities. Has everybody had an opportunity to review the telecommunicators contract? It's a very important contract. I understand there are some things in there that aren't correct. Mr. Raymond, would you fill us in on that, please? Um, I did
just for clarification, and who wrote the contract? Mr. Hibben. No. And Mr. And Mr. Burke. Mr. Burke. No. Mm -hmm. Hard to say how much time was put in on it by either either party, I guess. In the past, we've had situations where the union has written it and come back with things that we didn't like or weren't correct. Looks like we have the same thing again. Uh, Mrs. Crow. Money, I don't know. Time, Jim? Time, time for him, but I mean, I can't speak for him. I, mean, I wouldn't think it would take him more than two billion dollars. He might be talking $500,000, 600000 I mean, I can get that confirmation from him. If he's willing. Yeah, what? If he wasn't willing to do it. <laughs> but, I mean, you're. But, uh, I the main, you're, you're the, main thing, the main thing is that the contract has to agree with the arbitrator's ruling and what, what we agreed upon with the union in, during our negotiations. That's what the contract is supposed to clearly cover and state. Jim's not our labor attorney, but he is our attorney, and he's telling us it's not right. So it's yep. pretty right. straight. Yeah, and it's not going to be paid for tonight, today, after he signed it anyway, so it's still a 30 day out probably how would go ahead no, I, I think what we need to do is to is we can separate it out or just have a motion to you didn't it's, the motion yeah. wasn't to approve it it was just to send it right we here. can we can make a motion to send it to the policy and procedure committee for further review and, and correction. And in the meantime, we can get together with Mr. Devine and Mr. Powers and get all these things taken care of. I'll make that motion to send it back to policy and procedure for further review and advice from Jim Devine and our labor. Is that? <clears throat> well, Mr. Powers. Do we need it not to exceed on costs? Kyle. Are there any questions or comments on that motion? You're just opening it up to spend until it uh, until he's done billing. I don't know. It's a little touchy. I'll leave with I mean, policy and procedure. Jim. Okay. <clears throat> I guess we vote on that motion first. Yeah, to send that paragraph back to the policy and procedure committee. Yeah. Speak, say that again. Nothing about the lawyers to send it back to policy procedures. No, you, your motion includes getting together with Mr. Devine and Mr. Powers. Yeah, is that correct? Yeah. yeah. Right. I don't. I don't think there's any disagreement with that. It's just a matter of getting the motion correct so we <laughs> all understand what we're going to do. Is uh, send back to policy and procedure committee for further review with Mr. Devine and Mr. Power. Sufficient. That sound okay. Okay. Donna. <laughs> Well, I guess we don't know what Mr. Power's schedule is, but I believe it would be our intent to get this in his hands as soon as possible. And Mr. Devine will take care of that, I believe. So, uh, and then we, there, those findings can be brought before the Policy and Procedure Committee and go through the process for next month. No, 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 the motion, the way the motion is stated, I think it's clear what we're going to do, so. To, 
to be clear, this is just to iron out verbiage. We know we're paying them. We know this is going to get misconstrued somewhere along the lines before it gets down to the employees. And then that isn't the intent of, the intent of this. You know, they, we're going to pay them. We're going to, they're going to get what they were awarded by the arbitration, but we've got to get this thing figured out. Okay, if there's no further questions, then we'll, we'll have the clerk call the roll on that motion to send this to the Policy and Procedure Committee. Kokenauer? Yes. Crow? Yes. Curtis? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Crumweedy? Yes. McGinnis? Yes. Offal? Yes. Hursley? Yes. Shore? Yes. Sticknot? Yes. Whitlow? Yes. Alt? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Barons? Yes. Bills? Yes. Bowman? Yes. Motion carried 16 to 0. That motion carries 16 to 0. Are there any questions on the remainder of the report? Seeing none, the, cl seeing none, the clerk will call the roll. Crow? She left the room. Oh. Curtis? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Crumweedy? Yes. McGinnis? Yes. Awful. Yes. Pursley? Yes. Shore? Yes. Sticknot? Yes. Whitlow? Yes. Alt? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Barons? Yes. Bills? Yes. Bowman? Yes. Kokenauer? Yes. Okay. 15 to 0. That motion is approved 15 to 0. Management Committee, Mr. Barons. Mr. Chairman and members of the County Board, your committee to whom was referred management services would beg leave to submit the following report on matters before them. Your committee met at the Administrative Center on April 30th, 2018 at 9 a.m. Members present were Barons, Alt, Bowman, Johnson, McGinnis, and Awful. Larry Haspargan was absent. Also present, County Board Chairman John Schur, Maintenance Supervisor Chris Drake, County Engineer Joel Moore, Eric Phillips with Micro Ener Microgrid Energy, and Wendy Davis with the Times Republic. The meeting was called to order. It was moved by Kevin Bowman, second by Sherry Johnson, to approve the agenda. Motion carried by a voice vote. There were no public comments. Management Chairman Barron's opened the courthouse parking lot bid received by Iroquois Paving Corporation. County Engineer Joel Moore reviewed the bid with the committee. The bid read as follows. $92,603.70 for the construction of an HMA overlay and repair to curb and gutters of the south parking lot of Iroquois County Courthouse. It was noted the bid, the bid amount is approximately 7000 less than what was budgeted for the project. It was moved by McGinnis, second by Bowman, to accept Iroquois Paving's bid for the courthouse parking lot. Roll call vote was taken. Motion carried. No updates were given on the building efficiencies. Maintenance Supervisor Chris Drake reported on the following. Drake contacted a vendor about the oiling and striping of the parking lot at the Administrative Center. The project is in the budget and is scheduled for later this summer. A gas leak occurred at the Administrative Center and NICOR Gas was called to handle the situation. Our contractor, Halls, has commenced mowing for the season. With assistance, Drake will begin a welding project at the jail. Barron's gave an update on the office space in the administrative center stating veterans assistance has a tentative estimate of approximately $5,000 for their remodel. They don't believe they will have to make any electrical changes. Johnson suggested a formalized plan from veterans administration be presented to the committee. No updates were given on the county farm. Eric Phillips with microgrid energy discussed solar opportunities with the committee. Mr. Phillips explained Microgrid Energy is looking at several flat land sites in Iroquois County. The sites must be close to a substation with road access. The panels will be maintained within a six foot chain link fence. The first step is to receive a signed lease from the county to show land control. Mr. Phillips said once the lease is received, Microgrid will apply for an interconnection study with Ameren. Once all studies and permits are complete, construction can begin as soon as summer of 2019 or 2020. Again, as stated, he forwarded the solar lease to State's Attorney Jim Devine for his review. The committee also informed Mr. Phillips of other county properties located near the county highway department that could be used for solar development as well. It was moved by Chad McGinnis, second by 
Johnson to pursue solar development on the county farm, pending state's attorney Jim Devine's opinion. Motion carried by a voice vote. Barons informed the committee the waste hauling contract will expire in July. The current contract was for two years. The notice should be published this month with a bid opening next month's management meeting. It is moved by Bowman and second by McGinnis to approve letting the waste hauling contract out for bid for a three-year contract. Roll call vote was taken. Motion carried. The committee reviewed the claims. It was moved by Johnson and second by Kevin Bowman to pay the claims, subject to county board approval. Roll call vote was taken. Alt abstained. Bowman, aye. Johnson, aye. McGinnis, aye. Awful, aye. Barron's, aye. Motion carried. During new business, Johnson asked for an update on the utility bill audit from preeminent development. McGinnis said a new agreement was sent to Divine with updated wording. Preeminent development is waiting for Divine to approve the agreement. It was moved by McGinnis, second by Alt, to adjourn the meeting at 10.08 a.m. Motion carried by a vote, all of which is respectfully submitted, and I move for its adoption. The motion on the floor to approve the management committee report. Is there a second? Mrs. Awful. Are there any questions or comments about the report? Mrs. Awful? Well, you probably know this is coming, but what the heck happened out there with our mowing? It looks terrible, and it's embarrassment. I can make a call. Please do. I mean, I had someone ask me if uh, the bid had been already accepted, and I said, yeah, and he said, well, we can't over, you know, underbid him because he's so low. Nobody's going to get the bid but Halls. And look what we get. Okay. Now, John, the way this is on the agenda, do we talk about it now or after this is done? <coughs> after the after we okay. go through the report. Um, Are there any other questions or comments about the report? If anybody has questions, yeah. What is, is this related to... We're going to look at that that's, after, that's, the, after we go through the two. report. Um, there is a representative of the solar company here if they want, if you have any questions for her. If we want to, I guess, do we want to proceed? I guess that's what we're in, in here. It says we're going to proceed with pursuing solar farm. Is that yes? You, I mean, go ahead. Um, the our request for pursue is just to know the intent of this board if it's something we even want to consider because a few months back we had a couple companies that were competing around a thousand to eleven hundred dollars an acre and that was kind of squashed um, another company has come forward again uh, and roughly eight hundred dollars it could go up a little go down a little it depends on distances and what they have to do for infrastructure compared to what's available um, and that's $800 an acre versus what we get right now for farm rent. Um, and so microgrid came. I put out a request to a couple of the other companies. They're not interested now because they've moved on. But we just want to know if we want to re-entertain bringing in competition for some of the, we're talking 30 to 60 acres, that's about what's available. Um, and so... A representative is here to answer questions also uh, this is not the motions not to accept any contracts it's just to kind of tell the committee do we want to even entertain proposals because I don't want to waste time if the full boards like heck no we want no solar because we you know but the you're talking eight hundred dollars an acre versus what we get right now around 200 so it can help with some budget issues but we have a rep here to answer questions if you just have questions in general, but the motion is just to advise the committee. Our, right now, our, our rate of rent on the farmland is much more than $200 an acre. I have a question for Mr. Devine, though, regarding the process of doing this. All of our farmland is, is something that is handled under a lease arrangement. 
and it's done through the bidding process. If we're going to go into solar farms and, and provide leases on this farmland, should we not also be doing that through a bidding process? In other words, we can't just automatically enter into a contract with on, on county farmland with with one particular company. I, I I agree. I think it's in line with what what we're required to do in administering government property. Um, I know that the reason that the price has come down is because areas are filling up. There's less need. Projected, how long for there won't even be a need for a solar farm from us. Our ordinance does not provide for the any tax additional tax revenue. No, we went through a long process on the wind towers. Right. The wind towers do. This is a in my opinion a shortcoming of the solar ordinance. The county pays the real estate taxes on the county farm right now. So we, if if it's if it's if it's handled through the property tax method, the county will will not get any additional revenue. A lot of questions that need to be answered.
um, it when we were going through this and Bob was helping, he was, said they're waiting on guidance from the state on how to assess. It will generate more property tax revenue. Um, the leases need to be written such that the developer pays the real estate tax for that increase, not the landowner. Um, and that was something we did discuss with the ordinance, that that's something between the landowner and the developer as far as how the payment of the increased property taxes go, just like cell phone towers. Um, the tower developer pays that increase. Um, and I know this because I have some contacts with cell phones on some land. Um, so there will be an increase. It's just waiting on the state to decide how to assess them. And that's something Bob's waiting for. But it will drastically increase. The property but tax. unless somebody else, if, when we're talking about county farmland, unless the agreement in, involves for the developer to pay the taxes, it's a wash because the county pays the taxes on that. Yes. But and it probably would be something that we would not want to pay those taxes on it if it was more than we're paying now because <laughs> we'd be at a lot, we'd be losing money. Yes, the lease agreement will state that they pay for the increase in property tax. Our lease template does have a provision that I guess in my mind we need to see what the lease says. Nobody has seen that, so it's, we're out shooting in the dark there. But I think the other point is simply that we all understand, as Mr. Devine affirmed, that this needs to be done through a bidding process. Yes, and that's we discussed that in the committee, and that's part of the request for the intent of this board to pursue it so we can put it out for a bid to say we are going to allow so many acres who's interested. Um, and that's what our motion that we did in the committee that's before here is to pursue that. Is it your intent to break the lease that we have right now? The leases um, expire, you know, in two more years. The farm, the current lease operator did state that he is willing to entertain an amendment to the lease to allow solar development that during the bidding process when we talked with them, that they're perfectly fine. One of the reasons he was fine with it is at the time, um, I don't know how Ms. Spiros is connected, but there's a connection there, and she also does solar. So that might have been why he was willing to agree to. Right, so but either way, he did make a statement he'd be willing to to discuss that. But we don't have that in writing, so no, he may have changed no, his mind. No, but the, also the process... And she can explain it. That it once an intent to lease out the land, it'll take a couple years to get everything up and going. So by the time that happens, our lease with them is going to be expiring. We're going to have to put out a new lease. And they have a he um, Eric also said that they also have proposals to offset the loss of crop if they want to go farther. That they will offset the crop loss to the farmer if he's already planted it. So there's there's mechanisms in there, but that's the details to come later after we do a bid to see who's interested in the ground. So none of that none of these details are are in this motion or intended to be in this motion. Mr. Chairman. Um, my understanding was I, I feel there's a red flag here because uh, my understanding was they were trying to get this done with them by next month's meeting. And to me, that's kind of a hurry because in a rush for us not really knowing what's going on here. And I don't understand why there's such a big rush other than trying to beat out other ones. And that, to me, is not how we make decisions. Well, as I pointed out, again, we cannot, we cannot enter into a lease with these people. We have to go through a bidding process. They could submit a bid, other, others can submit a bid, just the way we do with our farmland right now. That's the process we need to follow. Mr. Anderson. Nothing, and government moves quickly, so we're probably <laughs> going to miss the boat. But the motion says, pending state's attorney, Jim Devine's opinion, I hate to put him on the 
spot, but are we even close to being ready to do whatever the next step is? Are we? I think we're a couple months away. Mrs. Scroll. Um, currently, what is the length of your lease, the leases that you're entering into, and would you be willing to show us your template lease so we can look at it? Yes, okay. I can. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, the base term is 21 years, and the reason why microgrid offers 21 years is because that last year is for decommissioning. If we were to remove the system, we're going to pay the landowner for that year that we're not operating and decommissioning the system. Um, then additional for the 21 years, there's the option for two exemptions. Okay, if, if there's no other questions, it sounds like nobody's against having the committee look into this matter further, so I think that's probably the best thing that we should do. You're, you're not, you're not, a, we, we can't recognize you. Public comments are over with. I'm sorry, <laughs> Mr. Rice. Mrs. Crow, did you have something? Okay. <clears throat> if there's no further questions or comments, Clerk will call the roll, please. Curtis. Yes. Johnson. Yes. Crumweedy. Yes. McGinnis. Yes. Awful. Yeah. Pursley. Yeah. Sure. Yes. Sticknot. Yes. Whitlow. Yes. Alt. Yes. Anderson. Yes. Barons. Yes. Bills. Yes. Bowman. Yes. Coconauer. Yes. Crow. Motion carried 15 to 1. Okay, that motion's approved 15 to 1. Next, we'll consider this matter here, Mr. Barons. Okay. Where we're at with the efficiencies on the buildings is we need to do a request for qualification. That's what's on the thing. Um, 
what you have before you is just two pages out of the um, the presentation that was given um, by SmartWatt. Um, they were there was some miscommunication on when management was, so I met with them and Chris. Um, and because of that meeting, that's where we came up with, you know, it is. We could continue as we're doing, interviewing different companies, but at some point we have to do a request for qualifications, at which point other comp all companies interested would come. So rather than continuing to interview, if we do this, then anybody interested comes forward, tells us what they want, uh, if they're interested or not. Um, what you have is SmartWatts, Proposal at this point showing total investment. Um, there would have to be borrowing done for up to 14 years, possibly. And on the other side shows the scope of the work being done. There are, are I guess, two schools of thought on it. If you, if we go with someone like SmartWatt, or we've also had Johnson Controls, um, it gets done immediately. It we begin seeing the savings immediately, but you, on the other hand, you're borrowing money for 14 years at an interest rate. The other thought is some people would rather just budget it as capital improvements and do it all that way. So at this point, before we spend money advertising for the request for qualifications, which ways do you guys want to do it? And there is a representative from SmartWatt here if you have questions on procedures and stuff. I guess it comes down to do we want to outsource it or do we want to do it ourselves? If we outsource it, we're borrowing money. Is that... A lot of thinking going on out there. The reason I brought this now instead of having it at back at management is we have budget hearings in July and so if we're going to do this then we need to go ahead and figure out which way we're doing it so that at the budget hearings you'll have a clue as to what way to go. And you know if it's going to have to you know when we start talking this kind of money that's going to have to Finance is going to have to be involved. So, so where do one you guys question. One question is: Do we want to borrow money? 
And I think many on the board are not in favor of borrowing money or seeing the county go into debt. That's I would count myself in that in that uh, in that part. Now you said this is one option. Are, are there other options that require no borrowing at all, or? I guess you said the phase project also could be that next year we do phase one and that's a chiller. We can allocate money for it plus what you guys do and actually have it paid for in one year. Is that? So we could phase it over three years with capital improvement money and use whoever wins the bidding process to do that. Mr. Anderson. The borrowing process, again, I keep going back to Jim, is that borrow money for 14 years, locking in another board, seven more boards? No. Okay, that's <laughs> what I thought. <laughs> so if we do it, we probably would not use the borrowing option. It would be a combination of using savings and our typical capital improvements budget is between 100 and 150,000 in phases. I mean, that's an option. Uh, the estimated cost Chris got for a uh, chiller over there was 160000 So, you know, that would be, that one project would be the whole year. You look like you have a question. I can give you the whole thing, but well, I just, I just yeah. suggest that we send this back to committee and do it okay. the right way and bring well, it back because I feel like everybody's it, sitting here going, yeah. wait, wh well, what is this? And the, I, I understand the process, but I don't think it's being presented well enough right now. And okay. I feel like people... Well, we have to do a request for improving. We have to have an official request. Like a well, uh, if we... Uh, what we're doing, what what's on the agenda is to request for qualifications. Which actually then, what what that, huh? Yeah, um, everybody, you know, the contract that Jim's looking at for the one company, they would actually have to submit it, uh, their qualifications and everything. It's basically, this is the starting point. The request for qualifications is actually a statutory requirement, right? So. We cannot go further in the project without the request for qualification. And that's something that they mentioned before, but it went right past me during these presentations. It was that presentation on Thursday where that was brought up again, that we have to do the request for qualifications, advertise it, it gets posted. To the Capital Development Board for at least two weeks. Okay and then all that would come in. And we can go back to committee with it. I just wanted this out there now we need to be able to do for, for budgeting if, you know, so that finance is aware of it and everybody's aware of it and what it may cost and, you know, you can either do the request for qualifications now or send it back to committee and we do it then. Always had a building fund for capital 
Yes. So it's just how much of that are we going to allocate to energy savings or those types of improvements? I guess his, if I can restate it, his question is why should we go with you? Why, why should we go through someone versus doing it ourselves? It, and and that's, I guess. He's going to tell us what we need or what we're what we can gain. I get that. Yeah. But the money part, you know, this is the taxpayer's dollar. And that's where getting direction from you. How you how do you want us to proceed? Do you want us to proceed as a, a stepped project rather than? No different than IT or anything else. Lay out something ten years and see what it looks like. I mean. Okay. So you'd rather us go that way than with a all-in-one project? That, okay. All right. That's what looking for that direction. Right. I am very confused. I was here for a couple of one or two of these presentations, and it's very hard in the, a fractionated form to make comparisons. Yeah. I'm very, 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 very... Um, well, this is just kind of, okay, this is the general cost it's going to be and the scope of project. Well, I, I really and, sort of... Excuse me, go ahead. And in order to even get to this point, we have to do a request for qualification, have it advertised, and that. That's what's actually on the agenda. I understand that. And I was just going to say, I think it's, it's for request borrowing on. the money is probably out of the question, probably to proceed in a phase. And the reason I'd like to see part of that done is I do think that over the years, utilities are going to be con continue to be a large consideration in budgets. And I think there's um, savings to be had there if we were to approach it in a phase kind of way. The next question is for Kyle. So with these capital improvements, I believe if you look back 10 years, we had much higher line items, much higher amounts of those. Like a dollar. Yeah. I mean, I want to say we were put in a half million a year into a building fund. Since that's been dropped to what in total? Under four hundred and a half. So big difference. Mm -hmm. What we're working with. Yes. It has to be understood too, though. These two sheets. And I'm sorry, I keep going back to yeah. this, but they're not really doing what we've been presented with before justice. So I think that yeah, it is a good thing for us to do the request. Because it's not committing us to anything, it's just allowing us to get more information, which I really feel like if everybody saw what we've seen in detail, it would be so much clearer, and then we could make an informed decision on it. This, this doesn't, this is just too great. Yeah, no, Do no, you that was just in a form of a motion. I did. What? <laughs> <laughs> um, well. You wanted to go back to the committee. That. You, you wanted to go back you, to the committee. Is that no. It? She wants to go ahead and do the request for qualification. Okay. I mis I Sorry, I misunderstood. You've been wanting to go back to the committee here well, before. Well, so. essentially, by, by doing the request for qualification today, we should be able to have everything should be at the management meeting. Okay. So we have a motion to go ahead with that. Who seconded it? Are there any further questions? Just 
money wise. You're just advertising when you say you got to advertise this dollars dollar amount. Oh, what what we're advertising is a request for qualifications so mm -hmm. that all the companies, hopefully including the ones that we've already been talking to, will send in their qualifications, and at that point we read, we read through and. That's when we pick who we want to work with, right? I got it. What does this motion that's about to be voted on cost us? Advertising, whatever the advertising in the paper costs. That's and, and so and so we may decide not to go with anybody and do it ourselves. Is that correct? That's possible. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Any further questions? Seeing none, the clerk will call the roll. Johnson? Yes. Crumweedy? Yes. McGinnis? Yes. Offal? Yes. Pursley? No. Sure? Yes. Sticknot? Yes. Whitlow? Is he gone? I can't see. He him. left the room. Okay. Alt? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Barons? Yes. Bills? Yes. Bowman? Yes. Kokenauer? Yes. Crow? Curtis. Motion carried 15 to 0. Motion to approve 15 to 0. Tax Committee, Mr. Sticknot. Mr. Chairman and members of the County Board, your committee to whom was referred tax would beg leave to submit the following report on matters before them. Your committee met at the Administrative Center on May 1, 2018, 9 a.m. Members present were Sticknot, Kokenauer, Offal, uh, Pursley, and Whitlow. Crumweedy and McTaggart were absent. Also present, County Board Chairman John Schur, County Clerk Lisa Fancher, Supervisor of Assessments Bob Yergler, Treasurer Mindy Kuntz-Hagen, ICPHD Administrator D. Shippert, Animal Control Administrator Dr. Yusuf, Roger Bard, and Wendy Davis with the Times Republic. The meeting was called to order. It was moved by Whitlow and seconded by Persley to approve the agenda. Motion carried by a voice vote. The committee reviewed the claims. It was moved by Persley and seconded by Awful to pay the claims subject to county board approval. Motion carried by roll call vote. During public comments, Jed Whitlow informed the committee he received a letter from a citizen about a dog running loose in Watsika on Tuesday, April 24th. The letter stated the dog had been posted as missing on the Iroquois County buy, sell, and trade site. The citizen tried to coax the dog into their vehicle, but the dog was very afraid and continued to run, so animal control was contacted. The situation was explained to animal control, and the warden said someone would be sent out to pick up the dog. No one came for the dog, and animal control was contacted again. During this conversation, the citizen was told there was nothing that could be done to, due to the animal being on city property. The police department was also contacted on this matter, but it was dark, and the dog could not be found by the time they arrived. The next morning, the dog was found deceased, presumably hit by a car on Route 1. Lastly, the letter asks why citizens are advised to call animal control when the animals can't be picked up. Animal Control Administrator Dr. Yusuf addressed the letter that was received and explained that the issue lies between animal control and the police department. If the police department doesn't give the warden permission to pick up the animals within city limits, there is nothing that can be done. This is an ongoing issue that has yet to be resolved. The committee suggested the letter be sent to the city of Watsika. County Clerk Lisa Fancher said there are nine resolutions and deeds for, partial, for parcels throughout the county that were sold at the auction on September 7, uh, 2017. It was moved by Awful and seconded by Whitlow to approve the resolutions and deeds acquired through the delinquent tax process. Motion carried by a voice vote. The department heads gave their monthly reports. Treasurer Mindy Kuntz-Hagen reported the tax cycle has been rolled to her office and they will be preparing to print tax bills. Fancher reported the tax cycle was rolled to the treasurer's office on April 26th. Excuse me. 
As of April 19th, there were 150 statements of economic interest not filed. Prior to mailing out certified letters to these individuals, Fancher's office began making phone calls to each person, which has resulted in only 26 outstanding statements. Fancher said the due date for statement of economic interest is today, May 1st, and the $15 fine begins May 2nd. A hundred day per day or hundred dollar per day fine is assessed May 16th, and if the statements are not filed by the end of May, the list is sent to the state's attorney's office for further action. Lastly, liquor license applications are being mailed today to be approved by the committee next month. There are nine applications ranging in price from four fifty to nine hundred fifty dollars. Fancher said these fees haven't been updated in years and the committee may want to consider raising them. Supervisor of Assessment Bob Yergler reported his office is in the process of starting to do assessment changes for 2018. Animal Control Director Dr. Yusuf gave his report for April which included nine dogs picked up and brought to the clinic. One bat case was reported to the committee, which tested negative for rabies. Sicknot said he is continuing to get in contact with the Illinois Animal Control Association about an application for registration. As there was no further business to come for the committee, it was moved by Kokenauer and seconded by Offal to adjourn the meeting at 9.27 a.m. Motion carried by a voice vote all of which is respectfully submitted and signed by those present, and I move for its adoption. There's a motion on the floor to approve the tax committee report, seconded by Mr. Persley. Are there any questions or comments on the report? The lady that was in here last month whose dog got picked up and she spoke during public comment, she said the police had not been called on that dog and it was picked up in the city of Watsika. So why was there this confusion with this particular dog in the city? I don't understand. I don't know the exact details of what went on, but I do know that the city has to authorize animal control <coughs> to pick up a dog. But they didn't last month according to that lady. Well, that's what she said. That's, isn't that due in part to that's how we get paid? Pardon? Isn't that due in part to that's how we get paid? It has to be approved. Right, yeah, it, it does have to be approved. We are, we are, the city contracts with animal control to pick up. And that's the way it works in many of the, of the towns in the county. Someone has to authorize animal control to pick up an animal before it can be done. Is there any other questions or comments? Seeing none, the clerk will call the roll, please. Crumb Weedy? Yes. McGinnis? Yes. Hoffel? Yes. Pursley? Sure? Yes. Stick Knot? Yes. Whitlow? Oh. Alt? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Barons? Yes. Bills? Yes. Bullman? Yes. Kokenauer? Yes. Crow? Where is everybody? Curtis? Yes. Johnson? 13 to 3, I mean, I'm sorry, 13, 13 to 0. zero. Uh, motions approved 13 to 0. Health <clears throat> Committee, Mr. Crumweedy. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman and members of the County Board, your committee to whom is referred health would beg leave to submit the following report on the matters before them. Your committee met at the Administrative Center on May 1st, 2018 at 9.32 a.m. Members present, Crumweedy, Kokenauer, Offal, Pursley, and Whitlow. McTaggart was absent. Also present, County Board Chairman John Schur, ICPHD Administrator D. Shippert, Director of Environmental Health Terry Iman, Roger Bard, and Wendy Davis with the Times Republic. The meeting was called to order. It was moved by Dan Persley and seconded by Kevin Kokenauer to approve the agenda. Motion carried by a voice vote. There were no public comments. Director of Environmental Health Terry Iman gave a presentation about wells to the committee. I'm going to explain that water is one of the core functions at the health department and one of his duties is to help protect the aquifer in Iroquois County, the aquifer. 
I'm going to also display a miniature well to the committee. ICPHD Administrator D. Shippert and I'm in reminded the committee that the Health Department is continuing to offer free water samples until they are comfortable with the results. Iman pointed out the increase in critical violations under food sanitation. He explained that this is due to a change enforced by the state. The state certificate that most restaurants have are no longer accepted. They must have their ANSI certificate. Shipper distributed the grants and contract spreadsheet and the program summary report for the committee to review. Shippert announced the retirement of Nancy Reap effective April 30th. The committee requested the Health Department report on services offered that are covered by the tax levy. As there was no further business to come before the committee, it was moved by Kokenauer and seconded by Offal to adjourn at 10.13 a.m. All of which is respectfully submitted, signed by all members present, and I move for its adoption. There's a motion on the floor to approve the Health Committee report. Is there a second? Mrs. Offal. <coughs> Are there any questions or comments on the report? Seeing none, the clerk will call the roll, please. McGinnis. Yes. Awful. Yes. Persley. Yes. Sure. Yes. Sticknot. Yes. Alt. Yes. Anderson. Yes. Barons. Yes. Bills. Yes. Bowman. Yes. Kokenauer. Yes. Curtis. Yes. Johnson. Yes. Crumweedy. Yes. 15 to 0. The motion is approved 15 to 0. IT committee, Mr. Crumweedy. Mr. Chairman and members of the county board, your committee to whom is referred IT would beg leave to submit the following report on the matters before them. Your committee met at the administrative center on May 1, 2018 at 1021 a.m. Members present, Crumweedy, Bills, and Sure. Michael McTaggart was absent. Also present, ICPHD Administrator D. Shippert. Roger Bard and Wendy Davis with the Times Republic. It was moved by Schur and seconded by Bills to approve the agenda. Motion carried by a voice vote. There were no public comments. IT Chairman Crumwoody and the committee discussed protocol for outside services for IT in the absence of former finance director Anita Speckman. Crumwoody said he assumed executive assistant Amanda Longfellow is stepping into the role but wants to be sure she is comfortable with the situation. Longfellow stated she has been in contact with area-wide and has the ability to enter service tickets if there are problems with workstations. <coughs> this had been the standard protocol when Speckman would take vacation time. Speckman sent an email to all department heads advising them to send all IT requests to Longfellow. <coughs> Excuse me. Crumwoody requested the email be entered into the official minutes. Crumwoody questioned the long-term IT management. <clears throat> County Board Chairman John Scher said the decision depends on the hiring of a new finance director. As of now, the IT committee will assume the role. Crumwoody also asked how the committee could provide Longfellow with more support from the outside provider and will there be a limit as far as what decisions she can make on her own. Crumwoody reminded the committee that Speckman had a certain amount of authority within her job description which allowed her to make decisions with the outside contractor. The committee agreed that if any problems arise, Longfellow may contact any member of the IT committee. As there was no further business to come before the committee, it was moved by bills and seconded by Schur to adjourn at 10.32 a.m. Motion carried by a voice vote, all of which is respectfully submitted and signed by all members present. I move for its adoption. There's a motion on the floor to approve the IT committee report. Is there a second? second. Mr. Bills. Are there any questions or comments? Seeing none, the clerk will call the roll. Awful. Yes. Persley. Yes. Sure. Yes. Sticknot. Yes. Alt. Yes. Anderson. Yes. Barons. Yes. Bills. Yes. Bowman. Yes. Kokenauer. Yes. Crow. Yes. Curtis. Yes. Johnson. Yes. Crumweedy. Yes. McGinnis. Yes. 15 to 0. Motions approved 15 to 0. Judicial and Public Safety, Mr. Barons. Mr. Chairman and members of the County Board, your committee to whom was referred Judicial and Public Safety would beg leave to submit the following report on matters before them. Your committee met at the courthouse on May 2nd, 2018 at 3 p.m. Members present were Barons, Crow, Curtis, Lamy, Awful, and Whitlow. Chad McGinnis was absent. 
Also present, Sheriff Derek Hagan, Coroner Bill Cheatham, Probation Supervisor Barb King, 911 Director Eric Raymond, County Board Chairman John Schur, Roger Bard, and Wendy Davis with the Times Republic. The meeting was called to order. It was moved by Barb Offal and seconded by Vince Lamy to approve the agenda. Motion carried by a voice vote. There were no public comments. Sheriff Derek Hagan, month, monthly report for April reads as follows. Patrol had 694 calls for service for the month of April. Year-to-date calls for service, 2,435. 2017 year-to-date, uh, 1,862, 31% increase. Booked in 61 prisoners for month of April. Year-to-date, booked in 199. Average daily population for April was 23. Year-to-date average population is 18. Year-to-date average length of stay, 19 days. Overtime in the jail for April was 168 hours on the schedule. Part-time hours, zero. One deputy off on workman's comp. Collected 48 pounds of prescription drugs on April 28th. Will be receiving a permanent secured drug disposal box from ISA, Illinois Sheriff's Association. Hagan noted the Chevy Impala no longer provides the police package as they have done for many years. When purchasing vehicles in Feb fiscal year 19, the cost will be higher due to purchasing new vehicles. Lastly, Hagan discussed the salaries that were proposed at the policy and procedure meeting. Due to the four-year salary freeze, sergeants and lieutenants are earning a higher salary than the sheriff. Hagan said the proposal will widen the gap between the sheriff's salary and lieutenant salary. No other office within the county has this issue where the elected official is paid less than their chief deputy. Hagan stated the sheriff's office is down 33% from a staffing level, but their calls continue to increase. Hagan provided all board members with salary comparisons. The committee discussed the collection of prescription drugs. Hagan said no illegal drugs have been turned, in, turned over thus far. When drugs are collected, they are incinerated or grained. Coroner Bill Cheatham reported to the committee that prescription drugs found in a home after someone is deceased are also incinerated. Probation Supervisor Barb King said her department informs parents to call the police if they find illegal substances. King reviewed the Probation and Court Services Activity Report for April with the committee. 911 Director Eric Raymond distributed the ETSB report for April. Raymond reported overtime will increase as his department is one employee short. The committee reviewed Circuit Clerk Lisa Hines' monthly report. Information on House Bill 4581 was given to the committee for review. The bill is requesting an, to increase the age of a delinquent minor from 18 to 21 years and if passed would substantially increase the burdens on Illinois counties, their law enforcement agencies and probation office, operations. It was moved by Jet Widlow and second by... Nobody. Yeah. I don't remember who seconded it, but we'll have Amanda check her notes. Um, calling for a General Assembly to oppose increasing age of delinquent minors. Motion carried by a voice vote. The committee reviewed claims. It was moved by Whitlow and second by Lamy to pay claims subject to county board approval. A roll call vote was taken. Motion carried. And there was no further business to come before the committee, it was moved by Awful, second by Crow, to adjourn the meeting at 3.30 p.m. Motion carried by a voice vote, all of which is respectfully submitted, and I move for its approval. There's a motion on the floor to approve the judicial report. Is there a second? second. Mr. McGinnis, second. Are there any questions or comments on the report? Seeing none, the clerk will call the roll, please. Pursley. Sure. Yes. Stick not. Yes. Alt. Yes. Anderson. Yes. Barons. Yes. Bills. Yes. Bowman. Yes. Coconauer. Yes. Crow. Yes. Curtis. Yes. Johnson. Yes. Crumweedy. Yes. McGinnis. Yes. Awful. Yes. Fifteen to zero. That motion's approved fifteen to zero. Transportation and Highway Committee, Mr. Bills. Mr. Chairman and members of the county board. Your committee who referred transportation highway would beg leave Smith to file a report on the matters before them. Your committee met at the Iroquois County Highway Building on May the 4th, 2018 at 9 a.m. Members present was Bills, Alt, Bowman, Crow, Johnson, and Chad McGinnis. Larry Hashbargan was absent. 
also present, County Engineer Joel Moore, Bruce Foss of Iroquois Paving, Corby Kloss of Kloss <coughs> Construction or Specialties, Jenny Newsbaum from CIT Trucks, Phil Bleeder of JT Truck Center, uh, Chris Ron from Ron Equipment, and County Board Chairman John Schur, and Wendy Davis of the Times Republic. The meeting was called to order. It was moved by Kevin Bowman and seconded by Chad McGinnis to approve the agenda. That motion carried. County Engineer Joel Moore opened IPC Iroquois Paving Fid for the 18-0019503 RS paving job. Their total bid was $934,495.28. More open varsity striping bid for the 18000000 GM striping project. Their total bid was $36,026.10. Paving and striping bids were taken for review to be acted on later in the meeting. Lastly, Moore opened the tandem truck bids as follows. And we can read all these, but the bottom line where we're going to go when you look at all these, after Joel looked at them over the weekend, compared them because there's a lot of different things in these trucks. It's not only the trucks, it's the attachments on that we need for snow removal and for sending material out of the back to trucks later. He has really feels that the low bidder in this case, which is the CIT truck option two, total for the $344,010 is the direction that we want to go with here. But Moore took a few days to review these truck bids for the action and will be taken on, and action will be taken later date. There was no public comment. The claims and financial reports for the month were reviewed. It was moved on by Donna Crow and seconded by Bowman to pay the bills subject to county board approval. A roll call vote was taken. That motion carried. County Highway was $85,275. County Bridge was $10,752. Township Bridge was $86,019. County Motor Fuel Tax was $40,098. Township motor fuel tax, it was $121,422. Moore presented the annual engineering agreement for township bridge inspections. The contract between Iroquois County and Firm Graham for the township bridges is not to exceed $42,437. Moore said that there are 166 township bridges. It was moved by Bowman and second by McGinnis to accept the engineering agreement for the township bridge inspection. Motion carried by voice vote. Moore discussed the HSIP grant for guardrail updates. The preliminary agreement with Cunning Engineering is in place and is not to exceed $82,060. It was moved by Crow and seconded by Sherry Johnson to enter into a preliminary agreement for the guardrails to enable the county to obtain this HSIP grant. That motion carried by a voice vote. Lastly, Moore discussed holding a letting for three precast box culverts for the Ashcombe slab and for the grading, shape, sharpening, and uh, it should be shaping and uh, widening the stone out of the motor fuel tax funds. It was moved by Crow and seconded by Johnson to adopt the resolution for the Ashcombe DR in the amount of $50,000 and the Ashcom AS in the amount of $450,000. That motion carried by a voice vote. The paving bids, the paving bid were reviewed. There was no errors found. It was moved by McGinnis and second by Bowman to accept Iroquois Paving's bid in the amount of $934,495. A roll call vote was taken. That motion carried. The striping bid were, was reviewed, and no, motion, uh, no errors were found. It was moved by Crow and seconded by McGinnis to accept a varsity striping bid in the amount of $36,026. A roll call vote was taken. That motion carried. During old business, 
Moore informed the committee of a retirement that occurred a few months ago. Moore said he has advertised for the position, but not many ex applications have uh, have the required experience. Also during the old business, Bowman requested an update on legislation changes making all the townships go to the county. <coughs> Moore said the changes may come out of committee in the state, but he's unsure if any changes will pass. As there is no further business to come before the committee, it was boomed by Bowman and seconded by Crow <coughs> to adjourn at 9.53 a.m. That motion carried, all of which is respectfully submitted. I'd move it for the adoption of this report, and I would like to add, because in committee we did not accept that low bid because we wasn't sure on the total tabs of that, on that equipment, and uh, I would like to move forward with that. Do we need to separate it? <clears throat> Might be a good idea, just to be safe. Yeah. Is that, is that okay to do that, Mr. Devine? Yeah, that's fine. Fine. So separate we have a... Separate. separate or just the motion to accept this? No, separate consideration. Separate consideration on the drug tax. Yeah. Is there, is there a second? I second it. Okay. <clears throat> we didn't have a second yet on the, on the motion yeah, for the report either. That's what I was looking for. <laughs> Mr. McGinnis second that. Okay, we'll consider the separation first. Are there any questions or comments on that? Accepting that bid for the low low bid on the truck. What are we separate from the report? The, the truck bid. The truck bids. Okay, so I just know, discuss them because there's no action in the report. We're going to separate it. Oh. Now we need to make a motion to accept the CIT truck bid, the uh, option two. Okay, so can't you do that one movement? Single, and then doing a motion to accept, or are you doing it all in one? We can do it all in one. So yeah, that's, that's yeah. That Did you restate it, Kevin? Uh, to separate the, the tandem truck bid. And to accept CIT truck bid option two for a total bid of three hundred and forty-four thousand ten dollars. Mr. Crumb, lady second. <clears throat> Are there any questions or comments on that? Yeah. Seeing none, the clerk will call the roll. Sure. Yes. Stick not. Alt, yes. Anderson, yes. Barons, yes. Bills, yes. Bullman, yes. Kokenauer, yes. Crow, yes. Curtis, yes. Johnson, yes. Crumweedy, yes. McGinnis, yes. Offal, yes. Pursley, yes. 15 to 0. That motion's approved 15 to 0. Now the remainder of the report. Where's the million dollars of cases? Uh, there'll be west of Ashcombe, and there's a slab heading north, so it's a north-south section of the road. It's an old state road that we took over years ago. That Actually, we got a lot of the money for it out of the wind farm action up there that we put in our motor fuel tax account when we got the money, and now we're going to take care of the road issues. Okay. <clears throat> Any other questions? Yeah. <clears throat> Seeing none, the clerk will call the roll. Stick not. Alt, yes. Anderson, yes. Barons, yes. Bills, yes. Bullman, yes. Kokenauer, yes. Crow, yes. Curtis, yes. Johnson, yes. Crumweedy, yes. McGinnis, yes. Offal, yes. Pursley, yes. Shure, 15-0. Yes. That motion's approved 15-0. You all have a copy of the claims in front of you? Is there a motion to approve the claims? Mr. Barons, is there a second? Mr. Bowman, are there any questions or comments on the claims? Seeing none, the clerk will call the roll, please. Alt, yes. Anderson, yes. Barons, yes. Bills, yes. Bowman, yes. 
Kokenauer. Yes. Crow. Yes. Curtis. Yes. Johnson. Yes. Crumweedy. Yes. McGinnis. Yes. Awful. Yes. Persley. Yes. Sure. Yes. Sticknot. Yes. 15 to 0. Uh, motions approved 15 to 0. Appointments. The appointments are listed in front of you there. Is there a motion to approve? Mr. Anderson, is there a second? Mr. Crumweedy? Any questions on the appointments? All in favor, aye. aye. Opposed, same sign. That motion is approved. Is there old business this morning? I asked last time about the dog kennels. And I, would, I was just going to bring it up. I apologize for not getting back to you on that. The kennels are all in storage over at the animal clinic. As far as I know, they'll be kept there until the next flood or whatever. Is there any new business this morning? Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Mr. Crimewitty, is there a second? second? Mr. Johnson, second. Is there a, all in favor say aye? aye. Opposed, same sign. We are adjourned. <laughs>